my tongue will talk of thy righteous help all day long. Psalm 71, verse 24. Albert Einstein said that science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. This is a laboratory of faith, and our ideas can be proved within the individual living them. The ideas of positive church, they can be used on a daily basis by everyone in the world, no matter what language they speak or where they live or what church they attend. The power of an idea lies in the capacity of its use in everyday situations that face us all. Let me share five fundamentals of the belief system that can change your life as taught by Jesus Christ. Number one, God is absolute good and everywhere present. Number two, human beings are children of God. Their very essence is oneness with God and therefore they are inherently spiritually good. Number three, human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in their lives has its beginning in thought. Number four, prayer is the most powerful thinking of the child of God that heightens the awareness of connection with God and therefore brings forth wisdom, healing, prosperity, and everything good. Number five, a person must live the truth that she or he knows, making spirituality a way of daily life. Now, let's look at number one in our lives. Jesus said that God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. God is unlimited, perfect, and eternal. And because God is omnipresent, God is everywhere present in space and time. Therefore, wherever and whenever we are in any place. God is with us. The subject is God and how close God is. Through prayer, we each have this accessibility of God. Many have thought wrongly about how far God is from us, but it is important for us in this first category of belief to know that God is not far off. God is with us surrounding us, within us. That is a powerful, powerful statement of oneness in faith. It's easy to dismiss God if we think that God is not aware of us, our situations, problems, and our difficulties. Oh, but that is not true. The starting place of spiritual attainment is the right understanding of the one that we designate as the Almighty. The first human mind concept that we have with God is usually a God as brute force. But as we look at life, we realize that concept is not enough. We have to realize that God is more than what we think of as force. A major breakthrough is to realize that God is the basis of all things, working in loving divine order. But as we look at life, we realize that too is not enough. The highest aspect that we can hold of God is to hold the aspect that Jesus Christ held. God is love. God is also the essence and the life in your life. To realize God is at hand and 
that you can manifest your prayers is powerful. To realize that God is working through you as you. Einstein called it E equals MC2, one radiant energy from which all things were made according to the vibration rate. God is also supreme wisdom and intelligence of the universe, and we are God's children, God's expressors. To be a, a child of God means that, like Jesus said, we are to follow after and to become more God-like, to have that mind in us that was also in Christ Jesus. That's the key to the wisdom from above. To be totally alive to God's presence, we have to practice it. One time, a man was on the streets of New York City, and he asked someone, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? And the person leaned on a street sign and laughed a little and said, practice, practice, practice is how you get to Carnegie Hall. Well, how do you get to God? You don't have to, because God has already gotten to you. God is already with you. God is with you at all times, and you get to God through practice by remembering. Practicing the presence of God that is alive and vibrant with you. That is the way that you experience all of God all the time. Positive Church is a remembrance society. We are here to recall what we already know to be true. Number two, our original virtue of humankind. Humans have a spark of spirituality accessible to them and within them. Christ in you, your hope of glory, you are made in the image and the likeness of God. You are a child of God. You are an heir of God. Humans' very essence as creation is that of the Creator. And therefore, they are also inherently good. As our Bible says, your body is the temple of the living God. It is the place where you pray continuously, where you hold worship services. In the story of Genesis, it talks about the beginning of humankind and how it all started in the Garden of Eden. In this rendition, we are told that the serpent tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit from one of two trees that grew in the midst of God's garden. The result was that Adam and Eve lost paradise. Some say desire caused the fall. Others say it was disobedience. Whether it was distrust, suspicion, doubt, or unbelief, it was a negative attitude that caused the fall from belief in basic goodness. This dim view brought forth some negativity in our lives, and we have perpetuated that in our minds. For centuries, a lot of theology has been preoccupied with humanity's shortcomings instead of humanity's potential. Jesus always talked about possibilities. The doctrines of original sin and the fall have been stressed, although neither of these terms is to be found in the story of the Genesis account. No, they're not. In truth, the root of both sin and evil is ignorance, which is a, a sense of separation from God's good that brings negative results into our world. Sin could be called anything in our awareness that brings about a negative result, anything that appears to harm or thwart our spiritual well-being or growth. 
anything that seems to block the expression of God's good through us or apparently keeps our good from us, anything that does not seem to be working together for good or that diminishes our awareness of the basic goodness of the universe in any way could be called a sin. The mark of a true Christian is how much Christ shines through him or her. The dim view keeps Christ from shining in us, through us. The dim view that holds us down to the concept that a human being was born a sinner and there is something basically wrong with our nature that misses the central spiritual truth about humans and the message of Jesus. We were born children of the Most High God. It is the decisions we make after birth that determine our destiny. The human is, in essence, a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe that is governed by spiritual laws and run by spiritual forces. Therefore, the human is capable of spiritual overcoming and mastery. We have free will to go in that spiritual direction or choose a lesser path. But it is God's will that we become spiritual. It should not be the purpose of religion to teach us to be afraid, to have fear, especially of God. Nor should it be the purpose of religion to keep us in bondage to any dim view about God or about ourselves that may limit our vision or hinder the expression of our spiritual potential. Religion should support the highest visions and champion the highest ideals. It should teach us the great privilege of our divine heritage. It should inspire. It should encourage. It should lift our vision. It should expand our awareness and grow our spirituality through life towards God's likeness in us. From the very beginning of the Bible, the human being has been appreciated as a child of God, capable of learning, growing, fulfilling the divine destiny for which we were created. We are, in fact, incomplete. We are not finished yet. God's not finished with us. But we are also God's own creation. It is good to remind ourselves that the acorn is no less a miracle than the whole oak tree. St. Augustine once said, Thou hast made us for thyself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. God has implanted within the heart of everyone an everlasting restlessness that impels us upward, onward, and inward toward our eternal good. Our third belief is human thought power. Human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in our life has its beginning in thought. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. This is the law of mind action. With it, we make our world good or bad. What we truly feel with our emotions and give power to, with our thoughts, is what we are really thinking. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, verse 7. God embraces all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and is the source of every manifestation of true knowledge and intelligence. 
The mind of the human is limitless, and through it the human may come to touch God's inspiration, guidance, and God's wisdom. The fourth major belief is prayer. Prayer brings forth wisdom, healing, prosperity, everything good of God. Do you remember what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17? Paul said, pray constantly. How important this is for us to do. Jesus never implied that we just pray in an indifferent manner and then hope. But that's the way many people do it. In prayer, we release a powerful energy of God as a constructive, creative force in our lives and affairs. Here is true prayer. Each day, make for yourself an opportunity to be alone for the purpose of praying. Relax in the assurance that God is with you and that you do not ever live or work alone. Turn your mind in concentration on the great God truth that your good is already established and all the good that God is already in the universe is yours. This is the promise of Jesus and can therefore be trusted in your life right now. And then decree the God good for yourself. Speak powerful words of joy, trust, enthusiasm. Make them your own. Assure yourself that you are God's child and that it's God's good pleasure to give you, the daughter of God, the son of God, the keys to the kingdom. Turn your strength and power of your faith on with this decree and say again that it is the reality of your life right now and believe this. Concentrate all your positive thinking powers on this truth of God that you're speaking. Let your mind be filled with the thought that the good that you are decreed is the most powerful reality conceivable in your life. Let's make this practical. When you pray for your healing, speak words of God's truth about your body and know that you are decreeing the most powerful reality conceivable that could ever be thought of in human mind or felt in body. Number five, expression. Give expression to a tremendous sense of gratitude in faith. It is living the truth of God moving in you. It is moving in the direction of God truth. Jesus never said to go apart a while and pray and then just sit there. Jesus, by example, taught us that we are to go apart for a while and then we are to put hands and feet and words on our prayers and go forth moving a little every moment in the direction that we want to go. Your part today is to move a little. Where do you want to be six months or a year from now? Where do you want to be tomorrow? Move a little in faith. Where do you want to be in your thinking? Move a little. Follow Jesus Christ in a way that you think anew and live your life anew. These five steps are five big ideas spiritually used by you in life. No matter what your language or what church you attend or where you live your life, these ideas are ideas of God that work. They bypass language, the boundaries of country, the boundaries of our own self-imposed limitations. God bless you.